favorite Santa Claus story. When I first came up here after being offered this position, I had no idea it was a Christmas-related job. And I was looking over my contract, and it said we made this run on December 24th, right? So I said, well, what about vacation days? And he said, you only work one day a year. You don't get vacation days. And I said, well, what about sick days and maternity leave? And he said, you don't get sick days either. And I said, well, what if I'm sick on the 24th or I'm pregnant? And he just turned a little red and said, you'll work December 24th in sickness and in health, and you will not give birth on or about the 24th of December. I thought, well, that's a bit fascist. But I could tell he was getting a little hot around the collar, so I said, okay, fine. But secretly I was thinking, we'll just wait and see. I mean, if I come in here barfing my lungs out on the 24th, this guy is not going to make me strap on a harness and fly all over the world. I mean, he's got clients that have been waiting all year for one delivery. Who's going to notice if it's been postponed a day or two? So I'm thinking it over. No sick time, no vacation time, but it's only one day a year, and I'm looking over at my calendar, and then suddenly, in a moment of brilliance, I realize that this is during the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> so then I said, so Mr. Claus, does this happen on or around the 24th most of the time? And he says, no, it happens exactly on the 24th all of the time. And I said, well, not every year. And he says, yes, every fucking year. <laughs> well, I was getting a little pissed off at the moment, and I said, well, excuse me, Mr. Claus, but what happens when it falls during Hanukkah or Kwanzaa? <laughs> and he just started laughing, that annoying laugh. And then he said, dancer. One of my reindeer is a practicing Muslim, and most of them are devout agnostics. But on December 24th, you are all Unitarians, because on Christmas Eve, I need Christmas deer to deliver Christmas presents for Christmas Day. Boy, was I embarrassed. You see, Comet was Muslim at the time. He had just converted to Islam that year. And then the following summer, he made his pilgrimage to Mecca, and he was completely embarrassed because he was the only reindeer there. And then when people started asking him what he did for a living, he was too ashamed to tell them that he flew Christmas presents all over the world to good little infidel boys and girls. <laughs> so he became completely self-conscious and had to go home. So I guess I really can't complain. I mean, Santa's been pretty fair with me. But I've been with the ache for a long time. I mean, not as long as some of them, like, Vixen or Dasher. But I was here way before Hollywood came along, and I've been here way longer than Donna and Rudolph. But I guess we don't really count Rudolph. But if Vixen leaves, and if Cupid and Blitzen go on strike, then that'll make me one of the senior reindeer. I wonder if that means that I'll get a pay raise. I mean, I should, shouldn't I? If you get raped on the job, that's considered a hazardous working environment. I mean, you wouldn't see that happening if you worked at a bank. At least, not during normal business hours. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe you would. I don't know. I've never worked in a bank. I worked in a zoo once, but the hours were long and the pay was peanuts. <laughs> no, that's, that's just a joke. I never worked in a zoo. I mean, I went to one once. And I don't know how those animals do it. It's completely degrading. They walk around all day, stark naked, and people take pictures. <laughs> and some of them, and I don't want to sound anti-Simian, but it is mostly the primates, will play with themselves in the broad daylight. <laughs> and they don't even get tips. <laughs> Apparently, the zookeepers don't like it when they throw money in the cages. I guess if you get paid for it, it's considered pornography, but if you just get exploited, it's family entertainment. <laughs> they say Cupid was a zoo baby. I guess that's why he is the way that he is. <laughs> you know, that's gotta be a scarring experience for a young fawner, or any child for that matter. I just don't understand it. You know, people will turn around and complain about gratuitous sex or violence on TV or in the movies, but then they'll take their children to a rodeo, or a petting zoo. I just don't understand it. If Blitzen... I'm sorry, I don't mean to change the subject, but if Blitzen 
or Cupid go on strike, I just can't join them. I need this job. I used to be a ballet instructor. I can't go back to that. You see, there used to be this movement, a fundamentalist religious movement that said that reindeer shouldn't ballet. It was really weird. I mean, it's not like we were doing modern dance. This was classical ballet. No, it was really scary. The only thing I could compare it to is like the Holocaust in Germany. <laughs> really scary like that. Because it just came at us out of nowhere. Reindeer were being beaten to death for wearing tights or a tutu, and we didn't understand why it was happening to us. And it was scary because some of the leaders of the movement, they were reindeer themselves. They burned down my studio. I just had to get out of there. It was just safer not to dance. That's why nobody does anymore. And that's why you've never seen a reindeer ballet. And it's tragic, it really is, because some of the best dancers at the time were reindeer. You know, dancing just comes naturally to a deer. Breathtaking leaps, dancing on point. When you see a deer pot, they do, they just leap over each other's heads. You know, some of the intricate tail work is just gone from the repertoire. Barishnikov still teaches it, but it's just not the same. <laughs> they say you have not lived until you have seen a beautiful rainbow dance the Nutcracker Suite with a flying stag in tights. I guess nobody lives anymore. If I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to change the subject again, but if I don't go on strike, that doesn't mean that I don't believe Vixen. That day, well, Blixen saw her afterwards, and if you'd seen her, you'd know something happened. I mean, she wouldn't say anything, or maybe not, I don't know. I mean, Santa really doesn't seem like... That whole thing with Rudolph is just a story. He never... I mean, him and Donna, they're really friends. What I mean is... I don't know what I mean. I don't know why I keep coming back to this, but... That day by the tool shed, I thought I, I heard screams and strange noises, but I didn't think anything of it because I've heard sounds like that before, and I just thought it was Santa fighting with Mrs. Claus again. They fight all the time. She's just nasty to him, especially if she's been drinking. That's why I don't go to the office Christmas party anymore. I tell them it's because I try to stay kosher, but, you know, really, it's because she's there. And it's awkward anyway, because, you know, she's the only one who isn't involved in the Christmas run. She doesn't make toys. She doesn't wrap presents. She's just his wife, so she's always there. And once she's had too much to drink, which doesn't take long, because she usually gets started before we even get back, she starts tossing elves across the room or, you know, <laughs> trying to drown them in the punch bowl. <laughs> she hates the elves. I don't know why. She hates Rudolph, too, and she's never really liked me. Is there anyone she doesn't hate? She likes Cupid, which I don't understand why, because he insults her straight to her face. One time, he said the only thing the clauses have in common are alcoholism, venereal disease, and snowy white beards. <laughs> she liked some of the bucks. Dasher, Comet. When I... I'm sorry. When I first started here, we were getting ready to go on a trial run and my sleigh bells weren't fitting properly. So I went to the toy shop to get another pair. And Santa came in after me. He said he wanted to help me try them on. I said I didn't need any help. But then he... 
I don't know. And then Dasher came in and he started talking about how beautiful the toys were that year. Santa just told him to get away. But he just stood there looking at Santa saying, what beautiful toys we have. They just seem so very fragile over and over again until Santa left. I wish I could dance again.